Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, today we will solve uh, a couple of problems related to forces. Um, and uh, obviously before going into the forces we have to know the acceleration, uh, velocity, etc. etc. Now, um, this lecture is a part of the course called Physics for Teens presented on Unizor.com website. On the same website you can find Math for Teens, which is actually a prerequisite, mathematical prerequisite to this course. Uh, and uh, Math for Teens is a relatively complete course of mathematics for high school level students. And this is intended as a relatively complete course of physics for teenagers. Um, now, um, the site is free, by the way, there are no advertisements, so free for all, no problems. There are exams and there are uh, very detailed notes for each uh, lecture. Well, except those lectures which are the problems. Problems are stated on the website and I actually encourage you to try to solve the, these problems just by yourself. There are answers uh, and you can check it. But the solutions, basically, I will present usually um, during the lecture about this. So, today we are solving the problems. Now, these problems are very simple. Uh, two problems related to a uh, movement with acceleration along a straight line. The, the third problem is about the circular movement. Now, they are simple, but they are relatively, how should I say, uh, universal because most of the simple problems related to this uh, type of motions are um, basically mo the same thing as these ones, maybe slight deviations, but again, these problems cover most of the simple problems um, uh, when you are considering the motion and the forces related to this motion um, if there is a constant acceleration, either straight line or circular rotation. Okay, so, um, the first problem is the following. You have the car which is going straight from zero to maximum speed and it takes that time. So, from zero to maximum speed along straight line, so it's an acceleration. The acceleration is constant. Uh, by definition of this uh, problem and there is a time so there is a maximum speed and there is a time it achieved and there is a mass of the car and now I have lots of questions about this situation now question number one what should be chosen as the most convenient reference frame the systems of coordinates for this particular problem now Obviously, the best system, um, which I believe in this case should be chosen, is the one which has origin exactly at the point where the car starts. The x-axis should be directed towards the straight line where the car is moving, the same direction. Now, y and, and z are perpendicular to this, but they are irrelevant because the uh, coordinates will always be along this straight line. So x would be uh, changing, but y and z will be still on, uh, on zero. And uh, obviously this system of coordinate is um, grounded. It's, uh, uh, it, it's basically fixed on the ground. Assuming that um, the ground is an um, inertial frame of reference. To a certain degree of precision, which is actually true, because our planet is rotating um, very uniformly and uh, it's so big that you can basically consider the movement within this relatively short distance as being a straight line. So, my first question is answered. The reference frame is supposed to be in the beginning, uh, should be a region uh, and x uh, uh, along the direction. Now, my second question is, what is acceleration? Well, acceleration is a vector, right? However, in this particular case, this vector will have only x coordinate because y and z coordinates will always be zero. We are moving along the x uh, axis. And also, I said that the acceleration is supposed to be constant. Now, 
if acceleration is constant, acceleration is the um, derivative of the velocity, right? So if acceleration a is constant, it means that velocity as a function of time is supposed to be a linear function, and this is my linear function. That's the only function, the derivative of which was, is equal to a, right? That we know from the calculus. Now, uh, since at time zero, my velocity is zero, this should not be there. So the formula for velocity is this, from which I can find out the a, because I know that at time t maximum, velocity is equal to v maximum, right? So this is a times t maximum, from which a is equal to v maximum divided by t maximum. Okay, that's my velocity, and it's constant. Fine, done. Now, now I know my acceleration. And I know my mass. My next question is, what's the force? Force as a function of t as a vector. But again, this vector will have only x coordinates. So that's why I, I have only one number. y and z numbers are always 0. Now, this is, by the second law of Newton, is supposed to be m times a of t. But a of t is actually constant, so it's just plain a. And I know the value of a, this is m v max divided by t max. So that's my force as a vector. This is the magnitude of this vector and direction is along the x. So this is a constant force which pushes the car up, 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 accelerate, accelerate, accelerate with a constant acceleration and it time at, at time t max it reaches the point uh, uh, it reaches the speed uh, v max now my next question is what is my velocity as the uh, function of time well actually we already did this and plus constant but the constant is equal to zero because at time t zero t is equal to zero my v is supposed to be equal to zero. So this is the formula for my velocity. And again, this is a vector in theory, right? But again, a is a vector which is w in, in one direction only in the direction of the x. There are no y and z component. That's why my magnitude basically characterize the, uh, the movement completely. I can just, whenever I'm talking about the straight line movement, I need only one coordinate, one number, so no need actually to go to, to vector arithmetic. But this number can be positive or negative, by the way. If it's within the uh, one line, it can be either um, towards the increasing of the x, as in this particular case, or opposite. But we have, we have chosen um, direction of x towards where the car is going. So it's always A is positive and that's why V is positive. And the last one, how is my distance from point zero will be um, related to whatever I know about this? Well, again, what is the distance? Distance is a position, right? It's a position uh, at the x axis. So it's basically x of t, right? Now, we know that um, velocity is derivative of the position, right? Now, we're talking about one coordinate only. So basically, this, func this function is derivative of this. Now, if I know the derivative of x of t is equal to at, what is my x of t? at squared plus bt plus c. Actually, b is equal to 0, we know that. And at point t is equal to 0, again, I have chosen my or origin of coordinate 0, so this is all 0, and this is my formula. Or, if you wish, you can put it v max 
times t squared divided by 2 t max. So that's the answer to all my problems for this very simple problem. Again, this is this is basically the manipulation with all the um, uh, parameters, all the characteristics of the movement. We have position, we have uh, velocity, we have um, acceleration, and then we have mass and we have the force. So that, that's all the components um, anybody is dealing uh, with when, whenever any kind of a simple dynamic problem actually is, is, is uh, offered. Now, my second problem is almost exactly the same, except one little detail. My little detail is that at time t is equal to zero, my speed is already something. So we started acceleration at this moment, so the car, before this moment, car was doing whatever it was doing, doesn't matter. But at moment time is equal to zero, my speed was the minimum. And then I started accelerating. I uniformly accelerate, so again, um, this is maximum. So my A is still a constant. And I'm accelerating during this time from moment t is equal to zero to t is equal to max, I'm accelerating uniformly with constant acceleration from this speed to this speed. So this speed is greater. And now I have exactly the same questions. Now, starting from the beginning, first question is my reference frame. The same thing, obviously. I choose the origin at the point when I start acceleration and I direct my x-axis towards the movement of the car. Now, what's my uh, acceleration? Now, in this case, let me um, again uh, start from the moment when a is equal to constant. That means that v is supposed to be a t plus b, right? Same, same, sa same, same considerations. Since my acceleration is the derivative of my uh, velocity and uh, my derivative is equal to constant, my velocity should be a linear function. But now I have a slightly different condition here. Because at time t is equal to zero, my velocity is equal to v minimum, right? Which means what? Well, it means that v is supposed to be equal to v minimum. Now, at time t is equal to t maximum, I have v maximum. So v max equals a t max plus v min from which a is equal to v max minus v min divided by t max so my difference between the speeds divided by the time it took to gain the speed from minimum to maximum which is actually an average of anything. In this case, it's average acceleration. So if we have a function at one point and the function at another point, we subtract the difference and divide by the argument, that would be the average change during the uh, some unit of time in this particular case. But since my um, acceleration is constant, the average is equal to this constant, obviously. But I just do it slightly differently. But we can obviously uh, apply the considerations of the average. If I know that the something is constant, the, const uh, the acceleration is constant, then I obviously can find the average acceleration on this period of time, which is v max minus v min divided by, 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 by total time. And the average would be equal to uh, instantaneous acceleration because it's always the same at, at all the places. So we got the acceleration. Now, since we got the acceleration, we got the function, uh, the, uh, the force. Okay, the force is equal to m times a, and this is the same formula for a, so it's m v max minus v min divided by t max. So that's the force which is acting. Now, acceleration and velocity and the force are all vectors 
I did not put the um, the, the bar on the top because they are all um, directed along the x-axis and uh, there is no real different direction when we have to really take into consideration the vector character of the of these uh, characteristics. They are all directed in the same direction which means we can just operate with them as with, with scalars. Uh, what's next? Now the speed. Well, the speed I have already defined. That's the speed. And that's based on basically the fact that if you have uh, a derivative equal to constant, then my function is supposed to be uh, this way, the linear function with this a is a, is a coefficient at t, and we have defined this free member based on the condition that at time t is equal to zero. If, if this is zero, this is supposed to be v-min, right? So that's why the function is v-min. And, fi and finally, the distance covered. Again, the distance is the, uh, the x-coordinate, and I know that, that this is first derivative of this function. Now, if this is the first derivative of the function, then the function itself is a t squared divided by 2, right? To get this one, derivative of this is equal to t and divided by 2, it would be just t, a times t. Now, this would be v min times t, and then I have some kind of a free member, which I don't know yet what it is. But again, at time t is equal to 0, now this is my distance of time, at time um, t is equal to 0, I'm supposed to be at the beginning of the coordinates, right? Which means I have to get 0 which means c should be equal to 0. Otherwise, my if I put t is equal to 0, if this is not 0, I will not get 0 here, right? So this is my formula for um, distance from, from the beginning of acceleration. And this is the end my, of, of my second problem. And my third problem is about rotation. So the first two problems were about uh, straight line with constant acceleration. Uh, my the third problem would be about rotation with constant acceleration. Now this is slightly more difficult, but very slightly. Basically, we have from kinematics we have all the apparatus which we need for this. So what's given? You have a planet of mass m, which is rotating on the distance r from its star well you can consider the earth around sun now we are considering the trajectory to be an ideal circle and I have a period t0 which means one circumference of that orbit of that trajectory is done in time t0 and then I have a huge number of problems from A to I. Okay, now problem number one is what is the best reference frame? Now let me think. Now this is my sun and this is my planet which goes around it. Okay, so this is sun. And this is Earth. Now what is the best frame of reference? Well, I think that the most convenient frame of reference is heliocentric where origin is in the middle, uh, in the center of the Sun. Now the x-axis should be directed towards the beginning of my watching, observing this planet, so that would be x. y should also be within the same plane, so the orbit of the, of the planet is within some plane, so xy-axis XY should be within that plane. x goes to the planet planet's beginning point and y is perpendicular within that plane within that plane and z should be perpendicular to this all to, to, to the plane to x y to x y plane and obviously whenever the uh, planet is moving within this plane its z coordinate is always zero so we can completely disregard the z coordinate so now we have a plane and let's look at this plane from above so this is my sun, 
and this is my planet. So this is R. Now my first, uh, my second question, after I have chosen the frame, my second question is what is my angular speed? So how, um, uh, how much radiance I cover per unit of time? Well, if T0 time covers my entire circle, and the entire circle is 2 pi radian, so my omega, which is angular speed, is equal to 2 pi divided by T0. Okay? That's my angular speed. Okay, next question. What's my position? Now, this is the x, this is y. Right? So, what's my position? At times t, I'm here. Now, what is this angle? Now, if I have an angular speed, then the angle I turn from the x uh, counter uh, clockwise would be phi of t is equal to omega t. Since omega is an angle by I I angle uh, covered in uh, unit of time, then omega times t would be the angle which I'm turning uh, by in the time t. Now, if I have this angle, okay, let's wipe out my ugly picture and put something more decent. So this is x, this is y, this is my phi, this is my planet, this is my sun. Okay, so what's my coordinates? This is r. Now, obviously, my x of t is equal to r cosine of phi, which is omega t, and y of t is equal to r sine of omega t. Okay, so we've got the coordinates. This is a position of this point, position vector, if you wish. This is position vector. This is x, y. Okay, got it. So what's my velocity? Now, velocity is the first derivative from the position, right? By definition. So velocity x, velocity is, okay, derivative of cosine is minus sine, and there is omega which goes as an inner function, so it's minus r sine omega t. Derivative of sine is a cosine, and omega is in their function, so it's r cosine omega t. So that's the answer. That's my velocity. Now, geometrically speaking, velocity is a vector, right? Now, velocity of that point should be um, pictured as, as, as a vector which has certain direction and magnitude. So what's the direction of this vector? Well, let's just do a very simple thing, and we did it before in one of the lectures. Let's just multiply. So this is my velocity vector. No, this is my velocity vector. This is position vector. This is position vector of t. And this is my velocity vector of t. Now, let's do scalar product. P of t times V of t. Now, scalar product is this x times x and y times y. Now, this times this would be minus r square sine cosine. And this would be plus r square sine cosine. So it will be zero. Now, we know from vectors that if the scalar product of two vectors is zero, they are perpendicular to each other. So first what I can say is that this vector is the vector of velocity, which is basically uh, showing the direction of uh, movement. It's perpendicular to the position. Now position ra is the ra this radius. This is position vector. 
and my velocity would be here, perpendicular, and we know that perpendicular to the radius is a tangential line, right? So it's basically, when it circulates, the uh, direction of the, uh, of the velocity vector is always tangential to the circle. Now, the magnitude of this, the magnitude of V of T, equals to square root of x square coordinate plus y square coordinate. Now, x square is basically a uh, square of this, which is uh, uh, wait a moment, I made a mistake here. It should be minus r. I said something about inner function, but I didn't write down this omega. I'm sorry about this. Yeah, the um, derivative is r is just a multiplier from cosine is minus sine, and then derivative of the inner function, omega. I was talking about inner function, but I didn't write down omega. So omega is here as a multiplier. So what is the square of this plus square of this? Well, it's r square, uh, r square omega square sine square, and r square omega square cosine square, and they're added together, sine square plus cosine square is one, is one, so this is r omega. So r omega is my magnitude of this um, velocity vector. Got it. Next. Acceleration. Okay. Uh, acceleration is, let me put this here, uh, is the second uh, derivative of x and y, or first derivative of the um, velocity. So second derivative of this is equal to minus r omega as multiplier. From sine, uh, the derivative is a cosine, and again, inner function omega, so it will be minus r omega square cosine of omega t. Now, y t would be uh, okay, r omega, r multiplier, derivative of cosine is minus sine, so I will have minus, again, r omega, now will be omega plus an in inner function will always be another omega, so it's omega square, and, si and sine of omega t. Now, this is also very interesting. So this is my acceleration vector. Now, let's compare it to the vector of position. Position vector is from here to here. Acceleration, as you see, is directed exactly opposite. The only thing is, there is an extra multiplier, so the vector would be shorter or longer depending on omega, but it will always be, since this is minus, this is cosine, this is cosine, this is sine, this is sine, r and r, r and r. So everything is the same except direction, which is minus, and the magnitude, which is, so it's basically here. What I want to say is that acceleration always directed towards the center. That's the gravity. That's the direction of the force. So the force of gravity is keeping my planet on the orbit. And this force is always directed towards the sun. And that's why acceleration always directed back from the position to the center of the of the circle. So this is basically my acceleration vector. Now what's uh, its direction? I have already done that and uh, magnitude. So magnitude is again square root of, uh, so it would be square root of r square omega to the fourth cosine square and sine square they will be one so it's r omega square. So this is my magnitude of my acceleration. Now, uh, next question is express magnitude of acceleration in terms of magnitude of velocity, where obviously a of t is equal to v square divided by r, right, of t. Square of this is r square omega square divided by r would be r omega square. So this is the relationship between linear uh, speed, because the magnitude is a linear speed um, by definition, 
uh, and uh, the uh, acceleration which by the way is a constant it does not depend on t actually it's a constant there is no t here velocity depends on the t but acceleration does not I mean the magnitude of acceleration the direction obviously um, depends so direction would be always changing uh, but the magnitude is the same and in case of velocity again the direction would be changed but the magnitude is constant so this is how I so this is ba basically also can be scratched alright so and the last is how to express the force of gravity using whatever information we have right now well the the force is equal to again second law of Newton ma ma mass times acceleration acceleration is basically the magnitude is a constant but direction is changing which means my F my the force with which Sun attracts the planet is also constant by magnitude but direction will be always uh, along the uh, acceleration right force and acceleration are, are vectors of the same direction but just different magnitude obviously so what's my function uh, what's my f in this particular case it's mass times acceleration which is this one so it's uh, mass times r times omega square um, or we can always replace uh, instead of this we can use we can use this and that would be exactly the same so it would be m v square divided by r so it's either this for my uh, force of gravity or this doesn't really matter this is in terms of angular speed this is in terms of linear speed okay so um, my point here is that probably most of the simple problems related to uniform rotation or in the previous uh, problems uniform uh, acceleration along the straight line all these problems are related to manipulation with the same characteristics again it's coordinates or position it's velocity it's acceleration it's the second Newton's law um, and they're all solved one from another maybe you, maybe you have given the, the force and you have to define determine the mass or you have given the force and the mass you have to determine acceleration or if you given the force and the mass and uh, and uh, uh, omega let's say then you, you have to define the linear speed I mean they're all interrelated and the formulas are exactly the same one is expressed in terms of another so all these little problems relatively simple problems would be out of all these characteristics something is given and something you have to determine using these uh, formulas and, and the second law of Newton uh, and the difference is only what's given and what have to be defined let's say the linear speed is given you have to define the period or you have an angular speed and you have to define the linear speed or, or something I mean they're all interrelated okay well I do suggest you to go to your uh, to go to this website and um, this particular uh, set of problems uh, you can find it if you will go to physics mechanics um, dynamics forces and this is the problems for the forces just do it yourself see if you have exactly the same answers because the answers are on the website and that would be a very good exercise that's it for today thank you very much and good luck